please introduce yourself. I'm Ellen Frank. Uh, my official title is Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Psychiatry at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. And recently I've also been involved in the co-founding of a digital therapeutic, a smartphone-based therapeutic for patients with depression and anxiety. What forces and factors have changed depression and its treatment in the digital era? Well, when I think about that, the first thing that comes to mind actually is the whole era of direct-to-consumer advertising in the United States. The idea that you could see on television an advertisement, a little bouncing ball that went from happy or from sad to happy, um, and was so destigmatizing of depression. And the fact that we included in these direct-to-consumer ads simply the symptoms of the syndrome, patients could think, oh, I have all of that. Maybe I have this thing called depression. And then there was a kind of permission. If this is on TV, just like the ads for my knee pain drug, yeah, it's okay for me to go to see the doctor about this. I think that was enormously important. More recently, of course, we have the internet and the availability of a tremendous amount of information about depression and other conditions, some of it valid and some of it not so valid. How can clinicians integrate their patients' new goals and expectations in treatment of depression? Well, I think beginning by listening to the patient, which we didn't do at the dawn of the psychopharmacologic drugs era. We brought with us from psychoanalysis that very hierarchical, um, the doctor knows best, the patient has nothing to say about this, I prescribe, you take. And we've really moved away from that in very important ways to a much more egalitarian, much more collaborative way of working with our patients, finding out which of the symptoms of depression are they suffering from most? Those ought to be the targets of our intervention. Um, and I think that uh, collaborative decision-making approach has made a world of difference in terms of patients' adherence to treatment. What challenges do you think these changes create in terms of maintaining a strong therapeutic alliance? A major challenge, I think, is for clinicians to inform themselves about what information is out there on the internet. Because as I said, some of it's entirely valid and some of it is complete junk. So being aware of what's available, pointing patients to the valid information, much of which comes from academic medical centers, pointing them away from the information that has no validity behind it, I think can be really helpful. So first inform, first inform ourselves about what's available. That's the first step. Thank you so much for your time today. You're so welcome.